Michael. David, how are you? I'm fine, sir, and you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Um, I am really excited about talking to you about Audition Psychology 101. Yeah. Um, so let's get right to it, seeing okay. as how that opening was so beautifully executed with us saying hello to each other. My goodness. Uh, That's so be. for those of you that don't know who Michael is, could you just take your glasses off so that people can recognize you? There yeah. you go. You need a profile? Okay, great. Another side. Okay. And, stay, and do a slate for me? Okay, no. Hi, uh, Michael. <laughs> uh, Michael is one of the best known uh, actors in the world by face, as well as by name in the industry, right? You're one of those rare actors who have a more button on your IMDb page, right? You have so many credits that they can't fit oh, them on the internet. I didn't know that. That's well, very prestigious. There you go. Uh, and I, yeah, well, I am, I used to work with uh, Michael, not sitting at a table next to him, but we would, we worked at the same time for Backstage, uh, mm -hmm. when it was Backstage West and Backstage Magazine, I guess it was, it wasn't mm -hmm. ever called Backstage East, right? No. No. East is implied. Uh, yeah, exactly, because, of course, we all know the East is better. Um, Michael wrote one of the most useful uh, columns in the magazine uh, called The uh, Working, Working Actor. Actor. Yes? Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Great. Um, how long did you write that article? I mean, how long did you write that column? No, we have a weird delay. Is that going to affect your editing or no? No. I'm not going to edit this whatsoever. Oh, well, then, then this question will be part of it. Um, I wrote that column from 2006 to 2013, I think it was, mm -hmm. uh, at which point, unfortunately, you know, the, the newspaper business is dying, as we all know, and the editors called me and said, yours is the most read and most popular column, and we have to cancel it. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, it's too bad. Yeah, I wrote but, the voiceover but, column at the same time that you were writing the backstage yes. or the, uh, the back page working actor column. Working actor, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I got to tell you, it was some of the most useful and truthful and sometimes appropriately uh, blunt yeah. advice that anyone could ever have. And I sorely miss it. I so appreciate that. You know, unfortunately, a lot of what's out there for actors as resources is written by people who are not working as actors. Right. That's the problem. Uh, there are a lot of, a lot of experts. And I include casting directors in that because they don't. Uh, although they not they know a lot about what happens in their own offices, they don't know about the rest of it as as we do. So I was I was so grateful to have the opportunity to write that column, and of course I I love mentoring and being an advisor and all of that. And it was so interesting to see the, the wide variety of issues that came up, you know, from readers. And uh, I miss that job a lot. I yeah. really do. Well, yeah. one of the ways that you mentor people, and the reason that I wanted to talk to you today is because you do. Again, one of the most useful things I've ever attended. Thank I mean, you. seriously, the most potent, I don't know, four hours. I think you went four hours that day. It's sometimes it's four hours. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. And it didn't feel like it at all. Like there are times when four hours feels like eight weeks. Yeah. This felt like 20 minutes. It yeah. was so information rich and reality cured. Uh, it's called Audition Psychology 101. Psych. Audition Psych 101. Just Is that what you're calling it now? Yeah, it's, I, I, I dropped the ology. Oh, you did? Okay, great. It's so, easier. Audition yeah. Psych 101. Audition Psych easier. 101. Yeah. And this is coming from somebody who basically sits there and pours out mm. for four hours his process. Yeah. And what I loved about it was that much of it was similar to my process, and I had started to experience some success, so that was kind of a confirmation for me. Yeah. But there was easily half the material where I was like, oh, yeah, oh, wait a minute, yeah. slow, hold, slow, slow down, slow your roll, sir. Let me write this down, right? It was that. great, and and I and I to this day when I mentor actors who are new to town, and they think they know what to do, they think they know what options to take and how to approach the audition space, I repeat verbatim, Good. using the F word. Good. Uh, what to say as you walk across the threshold. Mm -hmm. Just did it yesterday. Just booked it this morning. I'm telling you, it works like a charm. Good. Oh can, I, can, I, can I give wait, this phrase? Wait, let's stop and just say okay. congratulations. Oh, you're you're done the impossible. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever books work as an actor. Uh, right, exactly. That's, so. that's what people will have you believe, although you yeah. are certainly living proof quite to the contrary. Right. Um, but the one line that if you don't, if you don't 
uh, take advantage of what Michael does. If you don't go and see him in New York or go see him when, it, when he brings it here to Los Angeles for Audition Psych 101, I, I'm telling you, you must. There is one line that you will get about what you say as you walk across the threshold from the outer room to yourself to, right. to, to yourself right. you don't say it out loud to the right. casting director right. or to the director or to the producers or the writers sitting in the room but to yourself it is one of the most freeing lines it'll, it'll ever it really will and very counterintuitive because so many people and i'm not going to say what the line is you no, got to no. go see michael to do it, it it's it ha it's contextual you have to be there yeah. Yeah, and and it is absolutely to me the opposite of the attraction principle and oh. the promise and the secret and all, personally BS like I call BS on all that. I hate all of it because I hate all. it's not you, practical. Wouldn't not you practical. agree that you have to be ready and able to accept mm -hmm. the opportunity as opposed to just hoping the universe will send it your way? Yes, of course. Yeah, of course. You know, it's, it's, it, as you're talking, there's so many things that come to mind. You know, there is this glut of, of classes and workshops and opportunities and all kinds of things, mostly designed to make the teacher rich, you know. Um, and I, I always found it frustrating as an actor. And uh, because I'm not much of a salesman, I just want everybody to take this workshop. I, it's hard to get people to understand that this is the one to take. Mm -hmm. But I... I will say that I, I, I teach a workshop that I, I always wish had been available when I was coming up as an actor oh, yeah. because it's, it's, a, it's really, we haven't even told people what it's about. It is four hours of, that it's all about what, how you think about auditioning. And it's not positive thinking or envisioning or any of that bull. It's, it's how you approach it in your brain, which is one of the hardest things for actors to do. We do all these things to ourselves. Um, I deliberately keep it shockingly affordable. You know, it's these I days. Think the one I took you was pay what you think it's worth, and you it, had a suggested yeah. rate of forty dollars or forty five dollars or something. I've moved it up to sixty now. More so than more than a but bargain I mean, at twice the price. I mean, I'm telling you, yeah, there isn't anything for this for, for this price, and I think because it's so inexpensive and because I'm sort of humble about it, people don't don't get that it's it's sort of a must do. And I I I just live to share this with as many actors as possible because I had a horrific time coming up as an actor. I, I had I was so bad at auditioning and so terrified and so miserable. I don't. It's a wonder I stuck with it. And um, I love that people write to me and they're like. You've changed my career. You've yeah. changed my whole career. And yeah. that that's the payoff. I don't mean to sound noble, but that's the payoff. I really love that. So and and it's not coming from someone who managed to get hot dog vendor number two on that one episode of ER once. No, I'm a working and, guy. And yeah. opened up a, an acting school out in the valley here or on Long Island there or wherever. Right. It is somebody for whom the word acting is not just a, I'll get to it when I get to it, when I can, around my survival job. You're someone who's I traveled traveled with the, the Les Mis company for and years. the producers, yeah. The producers. You uh, always play the, pardon the expression, the asshole lawyer who's defending the perp on, you know, Law and & Order awesome. and CSI. And you're, you're, the Wire. The Wire. Yeah. Oh, The Wire is like the one of the, one of the marquee yeah. roles that you've had. Yeah. And you have that kind of uh, face that people go... I know him. Yeah. And then you go, yeah, Michael Costa. No, no, no. You, who are you? Right, that right? guy. <laughs> that guy, yeah. yeah. And, and there are some people who do not wear that mantle well. In fact, there are some people who have, like, become depressed about that. I imagine that's not the case for you. No, oh my God, I, I, I benefit from low expectations. I, <laughs> I figured I'd be waiting tables my whole life. Uh, you know, yeah. Because I, I'm very realistic about this business, as you know from the workshop, sure. very realistic. The chances of making a living are so slim, and, and I've now supported myself with acting. I mean, I take no credit for it. I think it's, you know, a lot of this is haphazard and luck and a bunch of other things, but I, I, I am not depressed by it. I'm delighted that I've managed to eke out a living, and What's been real, this is a little bit of a departure from our topic, but it, what's really been cool for me is after years of playing lawyers, in the last couple of years, I've gotten to do some real breakaway things that are nothing like that. And that's um, the, 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 the favorite was a role on Banshee, which is a, a strange uh, and terrible show on Cinemax, where <laughs> I, I got hair. Oh. <laughs> I was a long haired, tattooed, neck tattooed, scarred. Ex-con, smoking, snorting coke, southern accent, tough. It's nothing like me. My my friends went, "Who is that?" We have no idea. Yeah. So when you that, think about the word typecast, 
that was you're not, not the first person that they would think of that looks they're, like I've, that, right? You beat out Danny Trejo or something, right? I have no idea how it happened. Yeah. I have no, but anyway, that's, so that's been a, a really lovely thing. But yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm a working guy. I, I make my living at it, and I, 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 I only mention that because, um, you know, when I teach this stuff, I'm in the trenches with everybody. I know what I'm talking about. I know what we deal with. I know what's realistic and what isn't. And um, a lot of the stuff that we've invented about auditioning being terrifying and being, you know, that they're sitting in judgment, this is all invented stuff that we, we've, we've embraced as, as a tribe to be our mythology. Yeah. You know, it's, it's on our cave walls and everything. Right. Well, in and the it, absence of actual facts, we make shit up. Yes, we do, yeah, and as right. actors, the actors are really funny because what we make up always involves uh, terrible things. We don't make up. We don't make up. Oh, they love me. We make up. <laughs> they can't wait to reject me. Right. You know, we. I, people always laugh when I talk about this in the workshop. But but most of us, way in our subconscious, believe that there are monthly fictional these monthly meetings where the casting directors meet and they wear robes and they talk about who's been bad and you know the, the actors are kicked out of show business forever and there's a big book in the sky. You know. But yeah. part of us we can we we conduct ourselves like that. We're like, oh, I, I had a bad audition. Will I ever work again? You know. Yeah. And we, you know, I was laughing at someone in my m most recent mm -hmm. workshop. She said, you know, how long do you put up with abuse? I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, these people keep calling me in. It's now the 18th time I've auditioned for them. I'm like, well, that is so insulting. That I've is, yeah. uh, been through too much. You should I, well, draw part, part of it is that, you know, we recognize a behavior and don't want to give ourselves enough credit for that behavior actually happening. I mean, being called in the 18th time means you booked the room, which is your it's, goal, right? It's, it's never, there's only an actor, as I said to her, only an actor could construe that as an insult. Yeah. Because we're neurotic and we're strange people yeah. and we have, you know, we, we are often at war with our own brains and that's what my four-hour workshop is about. Yeah. The workshop, um, again, is called Audition Psych 101. Is it auditionpsych101.com? Yes. It is indeed. Okay. It's and so I teach voiceover here in Los yes. Angeles, and all of the things that you teach in the class are certainly applicable when you walk into a studio or when you're sitting at your desk with your microphone and you're auditioning from home, which is what a lot of people do. Yeah. So uh, this, this whole idea of how you set your mind up and yeah. even how you position yourself in the outer room. You know, when yeah. I, I booked a, a role on a show called Heroes, which I was on for three seasons, and... I positioned myself opposite the door so that I could see who was in there. It helps. And, I, and there were 11 people in the room. This was a very important series for NBC. And I watched every single one of these actors who I recognized from being scared crapless by them on television forever. You know, I'm sitting there, I'm asking myself, what are you doing in here? I mean, these, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm sitting next to Greg Henry. And I'm like, yeah. what? Really? Really? You know, so... But I watched every single person. They all knew each other. They were kibitzing, and they weren't like their head wasn't really in it. And I watched every single one of them walk into the room and instantly get put off their game because there being not one or two people in the room, but eleven. And well, it's little you, things like I, that. I, I, you demystified that by seeing in advance who was there. Exactly. Yeah. I walked in and I said, "Hey, welcome everybody to my audition. Thank you for coming." Right. right. You know, it was great. And so. Little things like that, just the little tiniest tweaks, and you offer hundreds of them, as well as... Are you still working off a stack of, deck, uh, of index cards? Yeah, I don't look at them as often, but yes. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, and I'm wondering why you're, you haven't recorded this and ah. offered it online, on demand. When, at 2.30 in the morning, when somebody is just suffering because they can't figure out how to do auditions right... You should be there for forty bucks or sixty bucks or whatever. You yeah. can change your life at two thirty one a.m. Um, What's going I, on with that? I, well, I'm, I'm working on a book, but I guess that's like old school at this point. I'm, uh, the book's almost finished and should be out, I, I imagine, next year. But um, uh, I'll, I'll give you a very honest answer. I don't know how to do that. I will help you. Okay. I promise. All thirty six okay. of my classes are on video and in ten lesson sets. Listen, we'll talk offline. I'll I'll tell you what to do. It's easy. I'm, I'm such a I'm so slow on that stuff. Like I said, I'm 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 so not a businessman. I just love sharing this with people. Um, I by the way, we have we've gone this far. We haven't. Oh, we just did say the, say the website is auditionpsych101.com, and there's no e in psych. People sometimes make that mistake. I just revamped the website with a bunch of testimonials and video testimonials Great. and information, and and I'm so I'm excited about it. I I 
because I live in New York now, I do it about eight times a year in New York, but I also do it every time I travel. Like if I go to back, back to LA for Thanksgiving, as I often do, there will be a workshop. So, and I, and I, you know, I just came back from, uh, from Maryland and I oh. did a workshop there for the Baltimore and DC actors. Oh, so that's awesome. if anybody wants to get on the mailing list, I have specific lists for different cities. And if you just tell me what city, you know, I'll, I'll let you know if I get there. Um, right. because I always, I do it everywhere because it's really fun yeah. as you know. It's 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 fun to do and it's fun and and it's a lot of laughing and it's really low pressure but you know I've gotten just hundreds of emails at this point from actors who who say they just are having such a better time at auditioning and considering we can't control them I think the goal really should be well, it was fun I had yeah, a good time yeah. Isn't it amazing how effective just offering the truth and yes. your story is that's right. You know, yes. I mean, that's to me. Absolutely. That's to me what the secret is. Is it's it's moment after moment after moment of here is a situation that happened. Here's how I handle it. Maybe right. that'll work for you too. Right. Here's something that was kind of crazy that happened that I turned into something better. You know, don't start fortune telling and right. predicting what you know. So as you as you think about you know the the most effective things that you do, could you give me just what you consider to be the biggest mistake? that actors make as yes. they arrive for the audition? As they arrive, I thought you were going to say something else, but all right. Um, well, you can change it if you want to, but you, no, said something right. in the, you said something in the session about signing in. Do you remember that? I don't. Okay. So I don't. I, Let me guess. Let me guess what I said. You tell me if I'm right. Okay. That, you know, we usually arrive just in time to sign in, we, and, and you can sort of take some time and breathe and Absolutely. hang out a little bit, and you know, and uh, and there's we seem to approach so much of this like like we're trying to pass a test. Yeah, I got here, I signed in. I mean, I mean, do I get on my permanent record, or do I have to go see the assistant principal? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what I, you said was, don't sign in right away. Take your time, catch your out. breath. Maybe you walked across the studio. Maybe you couldn't find parking and you were a little agitated about it. Maybe you're a minute or two late and you're instantly thinking and that. Cares. Yeah, know, exactly. You know, again, part of, part of our mythology is that people are, I always say that we think that auditioning is like playing the game Operation, where you're lifting the bones out and if you go eh, eh, too much in one yeah, direction, yeah. everything's ruined. I can't show. But, uh, but I, just t taking a little bit of a bigger picture, I, I think the... I think the biggest mistake that actors make, and this sounds so weird to people who have not taken my workshop, I think the biggest mistake actors make about auditioning is um, subscribing to the insane theory that they can control the outcome and get themselves picked. This is what I call actor crack. They're addicted <laughs> to the idea that there is some magical thing they can do to get people to go, oh, I'm hiring you. Well, like there tracking, is no your, tracking the tie color that you're wearing. Oh, yeah. For your auditions. Oh, oh yeah. I always book if I wear the green, you know, rep tie. It's superstition. What? It's superstition. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, I, I, and I, I've, I've fallen prey to it as much as anyone. But, I mean, it, people, we come up with a little catchphrase or a little outfit that we like. Or, you know, whenever I come in there, I say, I'm here to work. Or, you know, some stupid thing. Yeah. None of, you know, no, people are going to pick who they're going to pick. It's not our job to get picked. We don't know how to do that. And that's the big mistake is actors go in going, I'm going to control them with my mind. And it's, that's, that's cuckoo. Right. That's cuckoo. And let me also caution you or, or relieve you, uh, if you're watching this, of the notion that Michael has some 90 lesson subscription thing that he's trying to upsell you this after this. This is it. I don't know and, anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> and this is all there. This is like... It's like getting the finest meal at one of the best restaurants in town for an amazing price and walking away knowing that you will remember moments from this dinner for the rest of your life. I mean, I seriously can't tell you. you how much it has helped me. Uh, you know, I'm on my 53rd network show right now. I have done 38 studio films. Uh, you know, commercials, I'm lots. Than I am, my God. No, 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 no. <laughs> and and that's the other thing. You do say over and over. Look, this is not a race. No. This is not you beating out some other actor for the job. This is no. someone making a business decision about who they are going to hire and spend an inordinate amount of money on, who's yeah. not going to screw it up. 
You know, sometimes right. I think one of the things that you also said was it's not the best actor that gets the job. It's the one they pick. It's the right actor for them at the oh, time. I, I've been, I have been overlooked for jobs I should have booked, and I have, been, I have booked jobs I should never have gotten. Right. So, you know, it, it's not, I, I, I always imagine a much better actor sitting at home watching me on TV going, how did this guy get cast? <laughs> you know, because it's just, it doesn't line up by, it's not a merit system. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I would think one of the columns that I got at the, at the, uh, when I was writing the column was, was, you know, when's it my turn? I've been at this a long time. It's like, you don't get a turn. Yeah. You know, you, you keep at it. You just keep yeah. at it. And there's you nothing it. about what has happened other than sort of work begetting work. I mean, you, you're recognized, but there's nothing yeah. about what has happened that will affect that next job that you walk into. They're not going, huh, you know, they, they hired him for that other show. Maybe we no. should reconsider, right? Listen, I, I mean, I, I just finished a job and I'm unemployed. That's the, that's, the, that's the life of the actor. You know, I was doing a play and, you know, we do these talkbacks and the, the, uh, the, 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 the blue hairs always say, so what do you have coming up next? And I said, nothing. I, I don't know. I don't know. Or don't what know. roles are you choosing these days? Choosing. You know. I love that. Yeah. So, so I, I must say, you know, yes. as my testimonial, uh, there are a couple of things in my acting career that have been seminal. And uh, one of them was studying with Howard Fine. Another was reading the book Secrets he's of... Good. He's awesome. Uh, <laughs> if I was in New York and Uda was still around, I'd be with her, right? I'd be at HP, right? But uh, reading the book Secrets of Screen Acting by Patrick Ooh. Tucker, which was sort of like wiping off the rest of the fog from the mirror and seeing, uh, you know, like all the technical stuff yeah. uh, as opposed to just the art stuff. And third, Audition Psych 101. I mean, it was without fail uh, the best four hours I ever spent in a in a black box theater in Los Angeles, and that's not saying negative things about black box theaters. We could do a whole other, you know, Skype session on that. But the idea that I could sit in—I think it was the Hudson Theater it was in, or maybe the well, Comedy Central Theater—and um, I I just sat there and I felt like I had to keep pulling my jaw up so that I wouldn't drool. I mean, I was just like, oh, this is awesome. Why, where is this, is this written down you know, somewhere? Is it, you know? And all we do is talk. And, and most of what we talk about is stuff that we kind of already know, but we just didn't want to say. Yeah, there's, and, it's like you're, you're rack focusing right to the sharpness. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I, God, I love teaching this workshop. I do it every chance I get. And I, you know, I mean, I've, I've yet to get rich off it. That's just not the point. It's more of like, it's a little bit of giving back to the tribe, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, um, yeah, I have one coming up on the on the fourteenth here in New York. It's already starting to fill up, and it's always word of mouth, you know. So I, I so appreciate for those of you that may be watching this, that's the fourteenth of August in two thousand fifteen. I have no idea oh. when you'd be seeing this video, so it may that have long since true. passed. Yeah. yeah, but but do pay attention. Go to auditionpsych one hundred one dot com. You have a mailing list. You said, and it's variegated by city. Yeah. So even if you're not in one of the production centers, you're not in L.A., you're not in New York, you're not in Miami or wherever, you're, you know, Chicago, because you tour and you do theater as well as on camera, you don't know. You may be in Denver in November. Who knows? Yeah, it's true. I mean, you know, I, I, I've spent, I've, I've done now three national tours, which take me all over the country. And again, whenever I get to a place where I'm there long enough, I did workshops in Chicago and Boston and, you know, in San Francisco. That's what I do. That's so, cool. um, um. So yes, please reach out. And also, you know, I'm I'm very accessible. If people have a particular puzzle they want to solve, they can drop me a, a line at auditionpsych101 at gmail.com and I'll I'll so you do my said best. That very quickly. Let's say yeah. that a little bit. Because I don't slower. want to get inundated. Oh, but okay. I, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you 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 have some great expectations about the number of views this video is going to get. Uh, but auditionpsych101 at gmail.com. Thank you for getting rid of that AOL account. Well, or maybe you still have it. I don't know. But I do. I'm trying to wean myself off it. It's, I'm not okay. very technical. But anyway, uh, be that as it may. Um, also, that that email address is is accessible through the website and all of that. But but I wanted to thank you for you know for sharing this with folks. I I, I really appreciate it, and I, and it's good to see you again. Nice it's to see nice. you too. You know, I can't wait glad for you to come back well. to L.A. I'd love to introduce you as you do your your uh, your session. It would be just great. It's a deal. All it's right. A, I may be there Thanksgiving. We'll see. Oh, great. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, Michael Kostroff, uh, M-I-C-H-E-A-L, A-E-L, -E -E is what I meant to say. Yeah. 
K O S T R O F F. Uh, Michael Kostroff, you've seen him on television, you've seen him in films, you've seen him on stage, and hopefully you'll see him helping you do better in your acting career with this great seminar called Audition Psych 101. Thanks, Michael. Thank you so much. Bye.